Hello, and welcome to the Evelyn Y. Davis Studios at the National Press Foundation. How do you find news that is only starting to break? And how do you separate the news from all the noise that just looks like news? We're here to talk about Dataminer, a web and app-based platform that takes real-time information from Twitter and other public sources and turns it into signals that reporters and editors can use to get a jump on the news. The National Press Foundation is a nonprofit dedicated to helping journalists cover complex topics with depth and accuracy. We serve journalists in the U.S. and around the world. I'm Chris Adams, Director of Training at the National Press Foundation. I'm joined by Garrett Santora, News Partnerships Manager for Dataminer, and Mary Nahorniak of USA Today, who uses Dataminer on a daily basis. Garrett and Mary, welcome. Thanks for having us. Thanks, Chris. So we are going to talk today about some real-time case studies about using data miner on an ongoing basis, uh, which Mary uses at USA Today's newsroom. But Garrett, could you maybe give me the big picture overview of what is data miner and how, in general, can reporters use it? Absolutely. At a very high level, data miner for news is a real-time information discovery tool for news professionals. We are in a very close partnership with Twitter. We have access to the entire real-time Twitter firehose, which is roughly half a billion tweets per day. We're applying our technology to that real-time data set and surfacing for journalists early tips to breaking stories and also early tips to viral news content. Okay. So, Mary, could you maybe describe your role at USA Today? What's your editing capacity over there? Sure. I'm the Deputy Managing Editor for Digital there. So I help run the digital team. Um, I work with our, very closely with our breaking news team in the newsroom just on what we're doing today, how we're covering it. I specifically also oversee social, and I've done that for about five years at USA Today. So um, kind of helping coordinate whatever needs to be coordinated on a given day. Okay. Now, of all the potential news inf information sources that are out there, Twitter, email alerts, Nexus, I mean, what tools do you use, and how does Data Miner fit in with those? Yeah, it's a great question. So I think what's really important to think about is that a skill set journalists have always had is pulling out news and information out of all of the stuff coming at us in a given day and being able to say this is the story. So we've just got more of that now at our fingertips than ever before. And it can be powerful. It can also be overwhelming. So at USA Today, there's a term that we use a lot that is surveillance. Um, and it's just our way of talking about what's happening out there in the nation. And we're looking at um, what stories our competitors are covering, what stories our local news properties are covering. We've got 100 plus of those in the USA Today network. Um, and what's going on and what should we be doing about it? You know, what should we pass on? What should we work on? So Data Miner helps us do that surveillance. And it makes sense of, as Garrett said, half a billion tweets a day that you simply couldn't read. It would be impossible to do. Um, and even the best built um, Twitter surveillance system, like a tweet deck, and you've got great lists of local news properties, and you've got police, and you've got all kinds of stuff, really won't always surface the things that you don't know about or couldn't have anticipated. So Data Miner helps us get that information and get it really quickly. Okay. Now, I was hoping you could describe your daily interaction with Data Miner from the time you wake up in the morning and turn your phone on until you get into your office and your desk and on your desktop, your laptop, computer. How do, you, how do you interact with Data Miner, and do you have it going all day long? Sure, yes. Um, the short answer to going all day long is yes, and I think I'll tell you about my workflow, and I'll also tell you about how some other people in the newsroom use it. So um, when I wake up, I do have the app on my phone. I don't get alerts through it, but I can open it up and see what's gone on while I've been asleep. Um, and I can also look at my work email, and I've probably got some forwards from people who did work on an overnight shift that are saying, what are we doing about this story? Have you all seen this? Um, is this something we should cover in this specific way today? What should we do with this information? So a lot of people do get those email alerts um, flowing right into their inbox. And when I do get to work and open up my laptop, then I use the app, um, just a piece of software that's Chrome-based, and um, I keep that running all day long. So Data Miner is an, an essential tool for our digital team, for our breaking news team, and for most of our reporters um, around the newsroom. And what that app is actually doing is it's bringing up alerts into the upper right corner of my screen that will come on top of any other app that I'm using, which I think is really important because it can be very easy to ignore things even just on a small computer screen. So um, while Data Miner helps us already filter you know, what's, in, what's probably important, what's very likely to be important to us as a newsroom, we are also all personally filtering through those alerts that we get through Data Miner. So 
is this something I need to click on and dig more into? Is this something that I can ignore for right now because I know somebody else is on it or it's not a story that we're going to cover, that kind of thing. Um, so I really like having that piece of software just running constantly. And um, a lot of people on our breaking news team and other people who are big TweetDeck fans, they pull mm -hmm. their data miner alerts into a TweetDeck column. So um, and the, you know, a lot of people have got two big monitors and one of them is just TweetDeck. It's six or seven streams side by side. One of those is data miner and it's constantly part of that surveillance process. Um, and then we also have just enabled a Slack integration. A lot of newsrooms are using Slack to coordinate and communicate. And we now have a channel where the breaking news alerts that I get flow right into that channel as well. Okay, and Garrett, uh, so USA Today is, is one of your early partners, um, early, early news partners. Can you describe for me what USA Today's role has been with helping develop Data Miner, and who are the other news partners that you've used? Absolutely. So in our beta period, we worked with Gannett, and as part of that, USA Today, and then a, a Gannett affiliate in Atlanta, WXIA. In addition to them, we were also working with CNN, our first partner, the BBC, the Weather Channel, was our third, and that was a very niche use case, a very different use case, something we wanted to test out early on. And with all of these partners, um, and to a large part USA Today, we got a lot of feedback from them in the beta period, and that feedback was invaluable. It gave us the ability as a startup at the time to kind of iterate and build around that feedback and make the product better before our wider rollout. Okay. So I'd like to talk about a couple of case studies. One, one is local, one is international. Mm -hmm. One just happened yesterday, a courthouse shooting in Berrien County, Michigan. Right. So could you maybe describe for me how that story broke for you through Data Miner? What did you first see? And then how did you use Data Miner information to kind of make sure that this story was being covered and monitored by USA Today? Sure. Um, so I was in a meeting with uh, some colleagues and we got our first alert about the story through Data Miner. And as I said before, you know, Data Miner is helping us filter things and then we're all also filtering things. So this is an alert where you quickly see the words like shooting and courthouse. You might see a number like two or four. And that's something that I'm going to click into to try to get more information on right away. So it's opening up a bigger screen in the Data Miner app and telling me where this is located, if there are any other related pieces of information, what we might know about the person who sent this tweet, that kind of thing. So I've got a lot of information at my fingertips right away. Um, within 15 minutes, I, I clicked a new feature to actually email me every time there's um, a new data miner alert on this story. Within 15 minutes, I had probably a dozen emails of, of different kinds of people saying there's something going on here. So people on the ground, local journalists, um, people in the courthouse, people hearing from people in the courthouse, that kind of thing. So um, this is not uncommon on a fast-breaking news story, and all of that you know, leads us to quickly understand there is something really going on here. This is not a one-off or um, a drill or something like that, which does happen. So um, quickly, we also got one of those alerts from a Tegna reporter. So the WZZM is a TV station that's part of Tegna, and they're based in Grand Rapids. And he confirmed that there were a number of people dead at the courthouse. So. Um, at that point, we're already having the conversation, are we on this story? Who's working on this? Who's monitoring this? Because we don't want to go out quickly until we know something is confirmed. Mm -hmm. um, and in that way, Data Miner acts as a really fast, really important tip sheet for us. But we can't take a tweet as credible evidence of anything, right? So, and we have our own set of criteria for what we alert off of and how we write stories and that kind of thing. But because we have this from somebody in our network, that changes that conversation. So. Um, we're coordinating right away with our desk that coordinates with all of those local properties, 100 plus in the USA Today network, another um, all, nearly 100 in Tegna, and figuring out who can we talk to um, that can tell us something about this story. Are we comfortable with this reporter's information that we want to send a push alert off of? So that's um, one of the first things that we're thinking about. And then setting up a story file. Um, who's going to do, are we going to do a rewrite? Um, job on it at USA Today. Are we going to start pulling from the Grand Rapids station? We heard from the Detroit Free Press, who are about three hours away, that they were sending somebody. So, um, you know, this is all in the span of 10 to 20 minutes. We're getting a okay. lot of information from Data Miner, and we're also happening to get a lot of it from our own network. And we can combine the two to figure out this is how we're going to pursue what is very quickly, clearly, an important story. So, the, from the first, <coughs> from the first uh, Data Miner alert that you saw until USA Today put out put out a you f put out a tweet or some other sort of uh, push notification. Yeah, push alert. So we have an, a breaking alerts tool where 
in one click, we can send it to your phone, we can send it to Twitter, okay. um, we can put a banner up on our website, a number of ways of just getting what is our own alert out, yeah. And from some, from the first alert until that happened, do you remember how long that was? It's within probably 20 to 25 minutes. It's, it's actually probably a little bit less. Um, so our criteria in that case would be, do we have it ourselves, right? If we have something confirmed, either from USA Today or from our network, then we go with it. Or do we have it from two credible news sources, which could be national or which could be local? In this case, because we had our own local news source, we were able to go with it much faster, which is really, really helpful. Okay. Now, so do me a favor and kind of, you know, go back in ancient history, you know, <laughs> five years ago. Yeah. I mean, how would, a, how would a newsroom have gotten information on this kind of breaking story, um, you know, in the pre-data miner world, and then maybe even go back to the pre-Twitter world? Sure. I mean, how would, it, how would the newsroom be getting information and how much more quickly do things happen today because of data miner tools and, yeah. and Twitter and That's so forth? That's such a great question. So I can tell you actually almost exactly five years ago when I started at USA Today, one of the things that was happening at that time was Occupy Wall Street and all of the Occupy protests around the country. So in one of our editorial meetings, this is probably within a month or two of, of me starting there, somebody said, how can we see everything that's going on with Occupy? And the, what we ended up doing, um, it's not a short answer, it's a, it's a long answer, it took an entire day to do, is I built a bunch of custom Twitter lists for okay. different cities around the country. So I was able to you know, run searches on Twitter, which wasn't the case when Twitter was even in its infancy in 2007 and eight, um, and even nine. Uh, but in 2011, I could. And so I could figure out who are the people, who are the key people in every city, whether they're involved with Occupy or whether they're people who talk about it, maybe they're news, uh, news people or maybe they're um, people who are just concerned citizens sort of watching what's happening. So I spent an entire day building a set of custom lists mm -hmm. that I then share with a bunch of editors, a handful of whom maybe flowed those into their tweet deck or looked at them from there, but really it was, we had to create these things ourselves and then we had to monitor them ourselves. And even then, you would just be staring at a screen full of tweets all day long, which is difficult and right. if not impossible, right? So, um, so that's how that used to work. And you might get some story ideas from there, for sure. You've got all this information, you can pull something. Is it the best story? It's hard to say. Um, and then pre-Twitter, obviously, you know, when it comes to tips, those come a bunch of different ways. And one right. of the most important is having a good beat reporter who's cultivated sources, um, who might get a call from somebody on the police force or who is monitoring a scanner, um, and you know they are they're getting incoming information in a lot of different ways. But it's much more shoe leather, boots on the ground, um, and now we can get that information faster, and then we follow it up with that type of reporting. Okay, so let's go overseas to the bombing in the Brussels airport back in March of yep. 2016. Um, I mean, can you maybe just describe your interaction or USA Today's interaction with Data Miner that day? How did the information break that day? So Brussels is a situation that's breaking over the course of an entire day, right. and we're getting tweets about suspects, about um, na the neighborhood where they might have lived, um, about an increasing death toll, um, about pos other possible terrorist attacks either in Brussels or in other places in Europe. So um, it really helps us monitor something when we can't be there. If we are there, we might have one or two people there internationally. We don't mm -hmm. have a whole stable of people. so. Um, it lets us direct them and guide them on the ground, um, but we're getting those alerts through data miner, and we know also, you know, through the app, you can see that something is going to have a higher significance through a series of um, tags that are applied to the different tweets. So we're able to see something as a flash. This is super urgent. This is an update to something that was urgent, so it goes along with this other story. So that really helps us filter that kind of information. Okay. Let me go back to something you said on the. Um Michigan courthouse example. You s made a reference to a number of two or four on the alerts. Wh mm -hmm. What do those numbers mean? So that that was actually um, people who were shot. So as it turned oh, out, I see, I see. Yeah, four people were shot: um, a sheriff's deputy, two bailiffs, and a civilian. Okay. And it's just one of those things when you see a number or a numeral that you s immediately kind of your eyes go right to it, and you start trying to figure out what that is. And sometimes that's a dollar figure, and sometimes mm -hmm. that's a number of people who or part of um, a news event. So it's just one of those things that helps something jump out even you know, in a split second. Okay. Well, thanks for going through those examples. Any other uh, key tips or takeaways that journalists should know if they're going to try to integrate data miner into their ongoing news gathering tools? 
One thing that I typically s say about Data Miner is it's the only tool in our newsroom that people come to me asking for. And they say, hey, I heard about this. And I'm like, you don't have it yet? Oh my gosh, let's get with Garrett. So um, it's something that people have understood the value of right away. I, we've been very good at monitoring Twitter and other online sources for surveillance for a long time. But they very quickly understand the value and incorporate it into their workflow. So I think that can really help save some time for people who have a lot going on, um, you know, both on their screen and in terms of the stories that they're working on. Okay, anything from and, you guys? And to quickly add to that, like Mary said, a lot of people are asking for this platform. Mm -hmm. and, and what the people watching should know is that this is very customizable. There are reporters using this platform who cover local news and very local markets, national news and global news. So within our system, the settings are extremely customizable, giving the journalists the opportunity to set the customization up to what they want to receive from the platform, and they'll only see content that pertains to those settings. Okay. And I think it's uh, uh, just to add on to that, um, it can be topic specific. So we have our life section, which is entertainment based. The people in there have um, very celebrity heavy data miners. They don't necessarily need to know about what's going on in Brussels unless we're pulling them in. And if we were, we could change their settings on the fly to say, okay, you're working on this story for the next three days. Let's make sure you're getting all the things that you need. But uh, you know, our sports team all has it and, and people are able to get the information that they want and not the information that they don't need. Okay. Well, I th thank you very much. I think that's all we need today. Great. So thank you for joining us today from the Evelyn Y. Davis Studios at the National Press Foundation, where we make good journalists better. Today we've heard from Garrett Santora of Data Miner and Mary Nahorniak of USA Today about using Data Miner to find news within the noise of Twitter. Find more webinars and reporting resources at nationalpress.org and follow us on Twitter at NatPress.